Hi friends. Well, last week at the end of my video, I promised to talk today about exchange rates and getting cash out of ATMs and how's the best way to do that in terms of not spending money you don't have to. And one of my comments there was that I felt bad for people who are standing in line every day giving away money when they don't have to do that. I was talking about seeing people standing at these exchange rate places and, you know, the places where they post the buy rate and the sell rate on the window. And uh, there are some of those places where you can have an account and then you go in and you get uh, your money. And there are also places where you can just walk in and give them cash and they'll give you cash in a different currency. Well, I don't have any problem with those places making money. That's what businesses are supposed to do, but I reserve the right to get the best deal I can no matter what I'm doing. So Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. So how do I do that? Well, first of all, let's talk about how I don't do it. I have a Mexican bank account, and I used to recommend getting a Mexican bank account. I don't recommend that anymore. It was a system that worked very well for me in a different way 20-some years ago. I don't need a Mexican bank account anymore. I still have one, but I keep a very minimum balance in there just to keep it active in case things change. So I don't use a Mexican bank account. I also don't use a U.S. bank account credit or debit card from a regular banking institution. I have accounts in U.S. Bank. That's the name of the bank. It's not a bank in the United States. It's a bank in the United States, but that's the name of it, U.S. Bank. I don't use their ATM card. I don't use their debit card. I don't use credit cards from them. I also don't use any of my other credit cards, like I have a credit card from Chase. I don't use it. The reason I don't use these things is because they're not the best deal. I also don't use money transfer services because every time I make a video about how do you get your money here, I get these comments from people who say, oh, I use XYZ money transfer service and it works great for me. Well, I looked up how many of these there are. Let me read you the list of a few of them. Uh, Western Union, MoneyGram, Zoom, PayPal, owned by Elon Musk, the richest guy in the world. Must be making some money there somewhere. World Remit, Bitcoin, RIA Money Transfer, XE, Venmo, Cash App, PayPal. Oh, it's on there again. Zoom, Facebook Manager, Mobile Pay, Online Bill Pay, Bank PTP Payments, and click this link for 14 more. Why are there so many? Because they're very profitable and they're some of the trickiest ones. You know, there'll be a fee or maybe there's no fee. Maybe it's a uh, free. I saw an ad for Bitcoin on TV the other night. It said, hey, we transfer money all over the place. It doesn't cost you anything. It costs you a lot and it can cost you a tremendous lot in the exchange rate markup. We're going to talk about that some more. I don't use these transfer services. You need to have a credit card and a debit card. And those are different. A debit card comes out of a checking or savings account. A credit card goes into a, how much of a bill you owe every month. I'm assuming you pay it off every month. Uh, you need to get one from like Capital One. And I'm not selling Capital One. Okay, but it's one of the cards that works the best for this, and it's the one that I use. Um, every time I make a video like this, somebody will leave me comments about, oh, I've got a Charles Schwab account, and they give me my ATM fees back. Well, Charles Schwab is very good, and in fact, they do give your ATM fees back, and it's... Um, a very good way to do it. I don't want to say anything bad about Charles Schwab, but if you Google Charles Schwab, which I did just before I started this video, they have an exchange rate markup, which means they buy money at this rate and they give it to you at this lower rate. 
Exchange rate markups are very important in this process, and Charles Schwab, according to what I googled, charges between 1 and 6 percent. Well, if you're living on a couple thousand dollars a month, 6 percent is $120 a month you may be losing in your exchange rate markup. Now, in order to test this, I did go with a friend of mine who has a Charles Schwab account. I did this like three days ago. And we went and he took $10,000 out of his account and it came out to $494 US dollars out of his Charles Schwab account. And we calculated the exchange rate and according to the exchange rate that I got on my phone while he was doing that, which is a mid-market exchange rate, Charles Schwab did not mark up the exchange rate. So Charles Schwab, very good, gave him back his um, ATM fee also. Charles Schwab accounts uh, are not all made the same, however. He has a premium account and they aren't messing with the exchange rates when he withdraws cash from his Charles Schwab account. Uh, Capital One, the one that I use, does not refund my, exchange, my ATM fees, which are about $3 for a transaction here because they don't have a bank that they're associated with here, an ATM that they're associated with. So it costs me $3 when I do this. So in that case, Charles Schwab beat me by $3 for getting out 10,000 pesos, which is about $500. Yeah? What? Well, got to take a break, I'll be Back in a minute. So I'm back. The magic of manipulating time. Uh, we were talking about um, uh, exchange rate markups. Capital One does not do an exchange rate markup. So I'm talking to a friend about this the other day, and he says, wait a minute, Jerry. You're saying that no financial institution does anything for free, and yet you're telling me that you're getting your money exchanged for free through this Capital One way that you're doing it. Yep, I am, and I figured out how it works. It's not for free, but they make their money in a way that doesn't hurt me. When I make a transfer from my other bank account into my Capital One account, that's my Capital One 360 checking account, it takes four or five days for them to make the full credit into my account, which means that if I'm transferring $1,000, they're getting the loan of $1,000 for free for four or five days. Well, you multiply that times millions and you get billions. They're getting money, the use of money for free billions of dollars for four or five days at a time. Uh, the other thing is that then it sits in my account and they get to use it to do other things, loan people money, whatever. That's how banks work. But it's not a detriment to me because the money, it's the bank that it's coming from, they're not paying me any interest. So as long as I don't need the money right away, what difference does it make to me if they don't credit me for five days? Dollar-wise, cents-wise, it makes no difference whatsoever that it's out there in the Ethernet for five days rather than sitting in this account or that account. It's no consequence to me that it takes that amount of time. But it's a great consequence to Capital One because they're getting to use all that money for free. That's why they can afford to let me get an exchange of dollars to pesos and it doesn't cost me anything. So I'm just happy with my Capital One. And I also have a Capital One credit card. A Capital One debit card takes money out of my account and I used to use that all the time at like when I go to a store, the hardware store or Walmart. 
I don't do that anymore. I use my credit card. And I'm going to explain why I do it, things this way. As a matter of fact, I can explain it right now in something that just happened when I said I had to take a break. Lynn called me and she said, I'm out of milk. And I went to the store to get milk. Well, I also went down a little farther to uh, West Ahihik, where they have a place that sells Costco items. And I went because I knew we were just about out of toilet paper. I bought toilet paper, I bought ice cream, best ice cream, and don't go buy it all if you live here. It's kind of expensive, but it's our favorite. And I bought a jar of mixed nuts, and it came out to 952 pesos with 61 pesos in um, tax, IVA, 16%. For a total of 1,014 pesos. And by the time I'm out to my van to put stuff in it, my phone tells me that they took out $49.94 out of my uh, account. Well, I use a credit card, so it didn't come out of my account. It went on my credit card balance. And I calculated that right away. I checked the exchange rate on my phone as I'm sitting there in my van figuring this out. And... Now, exchange rates fluctuate in nanoseconds, so between the cash register and me sitting in the van, a, a couple of three minutes, it cost me 24 cents. No ATM fee, no international transaction fee, no nothing. A little tiny bit of fluctuation on the 50 bucks, 1,000 pesos, 50 bucks, 24 cents. Now, occasionally it goes the other way. Like I would make a few cents because I'm checking the exchange rate nanoseconds later than it, the transaction actually, ha transaction actually happens. In this case, it cost me 24 cents to convert my dollars to pesos. $50 to 1,000 pesos. It cost me 24 cents. Now, the reason that I use my credit card now instead of my debit card to get cash and pay everything in cash is because I get 1.3% back on every purchase on my Capital One credit card. 1.3% of the $50 is $0.65. Cents. So it cost me $0.24, cents maybe, and I got $0.65. Cents. I'm ahead of the game. Didn't cost me that transaction fee, didn't cost me ISA fee, didn't cost me ATM fee, didn't cost me any exchange rate markup. I actually made money on this process instead of it costing me money for the service of converting my U.S. dollars to pesos. There's the receipt right there. That's why I do it that way. I don't pay in cash like I used to have to and then used to choose to. Now, I still need cash. I need cash to pay my maids. I need my cash to pay my gardener. Um, when I use my credit card, at, like at the hardware store, I'll ask, do you charge an extra fee for using a credit card? And some places will. They'll charge you like extra 3% because that's what they have to pay Visa. If they do that, I don't. I pay cash. So I need cash yet. When the gas truck came uh, yesterday, I had to give him 2,500 pesos in cash to fill up my gas tank. So I need cash. So how do I get cash? I go to an ATM and I take out 10,000 pesos. And in my case, it, the one that I use, it costs 58 pesos. Now, you have to be careful with ATMs, at least around here locally. And I don't know how this works around the rest of the world. But here locally, several of the ATMs, the last button you have to push, it'll ask you, do you accept, accept this exchange rate? And you can say yes, or you can say, no, I decline decline because then it will give you what's called the mid-rate exchange rate which is the best you can do when you see the buy rate and the sell rate on the window somewhere you're never going to get that uh, sell rate 
You have to be an institution to do that. There is one way around it. If you have a magic cup like me, I have a magic cup. This is my magic cup, see? So if I take a U.S. dollar and I put it in my magic cup, it magically transforms it into pesos. Isn't that slick? I told you I was going to show you a better way to do it today. Yeah, right. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> So, I use my Capital One, I have a Capital One online checking account. It's called Capital One 360. My income comes into my U.S. bank because that's the way my business is structured and that's the way my auto deposits from um, my Social Security go into that account. And then I do an online transfer, which I do right here on my iPad. I transfer it to my Capital One 360 checking account. My Capital One checking account then is what my debit card does, gets the money from. And why don't I use my credit card? Because that, for the ATM transaction, because that comes out as a cash advance. And I have never found a credit card that doesn't have an extremely high rate for a cash advance, and that's not... That's an immediate charge. It doesn't look like you pay off your credit card every month and you don't pay any interest. Cash advances don't work that way. It's an immediate charge. You're immediately paying interest and there's a transaction fee. Do not use your credit card like a Visa or a Master Chart to get cash. Never do that. Well, that's how I do it. But I don't want you to do it how I do it. I mean, I, I like Capital One, and I like it because I've tested it, and like I said, you know, hey, it cost me 24 cents, and I made 65 cents. Uh, that works for me. Now, if you want a Capital One card, fine. I, I'm not here to sell you a Capital One card, but I do have a link. I'll put it down here below. And yes, I get a referral fee, but if you think I'm doing this video for the referral fee, then... You haven't watched enough of my videos. <laughs> uh, and a Charles Schwab account. Yes, they're very good, but it's a little more difficult to get a Charles Schwab account than it is to get a Capital One credit card and a Capital One uh, debit card for a Capital One 360 checking account. Um, to get the right Charles Schwab card, uh, is a little more difficult, especially if you're already living out of the country and don't still have a U.S. address. But anyway, I'm not here to hawk a particular thing. What I want to do is help you understand clearly how to do it yourself, how to take your cards that you already have and test them. Maybe you're not in Mexico. Maybe you're in Australia. Maybe pesos got nothing to do with your life. But take your card, whatever cards you got, or whatever method you got, whether it's, you know, put your home bank check in a foreign account, or go to an ATM, or go to a store and spend money with a credit card. Do whatever you're doing to make this transaction happen and then test it. And it's really easy, although people don't do this. You can't just look at your bank statement. You have to go and get some cash or go and spend some money and then check on your bank and see how much money came out and do a simple division. For me, it's dollars and pesos. I go and get 10,000 pesos. I look in my account and I see, oh, it cost me $494. I divide the dollars into the pesos. How many dollars goes into the pesos? And that's the exchange rate. And then I check the exchange rate. XE, XE.com. It's one place on the internet where you can check the mid-market exchange rate. You're never going to get the good sell rate 
or you're never going to be subject to the buy rate unless you go to a place that does the buy and the sell rates. The best you can get is the, what's called the mid-market rate. That's the average between the buy and the sell because it takes the buy and the sell out of the influence of the transaction. The international, and this fluctuates in nanoseconds all over the world, the mid-market rate is the best you're going to do. And that's what XE will tell you, the mid-market rate. So you go and you get some cash out of the ATM. You see how many dollars it cost you out of your account. And you divide the dollars into the pesos you got out of the ATM. That's your exchange rate. You compare it to the mid-market rate and see what you got. Now, if it's 0.1 off or 0.01 off, don't worry about that because that's just the fluctuation of the exchange rate. And you can't do it as fast as the international internet computers. You can't put it into your own calculator fast enough to make that, that instant. That's why I had it cost me 24 cents. Sometimes it might make me 24 cents or 18 cents or whatever. So go and test it. Test your cards. See what works for you. See which ATM does this. I've checked several different ATMs. There are some ATMs that rip you off big time. I'm not going to name names here. But go and test where you're doing it. Go and test it with your card. Go and test it where you buy things. Divide how much comes out of your account and to how much benefit you got in your home currency and your foreign currency where you're living. Please do that. Some of you will say, oh, yeah, I'm good. And some of you will say, oh, my God, this is really costing me a lot of money. I hope you're in the first case. But if you're not, figure out how to do it better. Thanks for watching me today. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.